Donald is too old. Uh, he been too old, he been too crazy, he been too everything. Uh, he's too much of a criminal as well. But no, and, and y'all cut right before the really good part where he said, I'm not a Christian. I thought that that was oh, amazing. Yeah. Is Donald Trump a Christian or not? Well, according to some Democrats who are triggered over his speech in West Palm, Florida yesterday, they would say he isn't. So in this video, we're gonna talk about it. Welcome back to my channel. This is the Devore Darkens show and I am Devore Darkens. So you already know what to do, like, share and subscribe so we can get this video out to more people just like you and me. Now, President Trump gave a phenomenal speech at the Believer Summit, which was hosted by Charlie Kirk, Turning Point USA, and the audience is predominantly Christian based. So President Trump, who is a phenomenal marketer, uh, a phenomenal uh, person who's good at branding and really tailoring his message to who he's talking to, he gave a speech. OK, and in that speech, he tail tailored it to Christians. However, there is a lot of people triggered and misinterpreting what he had stated during his speech to the point where they are pushing the idea that he stated that he is not Christian. So before I go any further, let's play that clip. Christians get out and vote just this time. You won't have to do it anymore. Four more years. You know what? It'll be fixed. It'll be fine. You won't have to vote anymore, my beautiful Christians. I love you, Christians. I'm a Christian. I love you. Get out. You got to get out and vote. In four years, you don't have to vote again. We'll have it fixed so good you're not going to have to vote. Okay, so let me just replay that part for you again, because some people believe they heard him say, I am not a Christian. I really believe he was talking so fast that he said, I am a Christian, but his accent and the way that he said it was kind of jumbled up, right? So you really cannot definitively hear him say, I am not a Christian. But you also have a hard time hearing him say, I am a Christian because he's talking too fast. Let's replay that little section. Fine. You won't have to vote anymore, my beautiful Christians. I love you, Christians. I'm a Christian. I love you. Get out. Right. So you, you kind of hear it. You kind of don't. Let me play it for you one more time. And you tell me if you can catch it and what you think he said. You won't have to vote anymore, my beautiful Christians. I love you, Christians. I'm a Christian. I love you. Get out. You got to get out and vote. You know, it's funny even making this video, right, that they find any little thing to <laughs> complain about that he said and twisted into a way to attack him. Right. And so let's back it up one more time. I'm going to play it for you and you let me know if you catch it and I'll even slow it down for you. OK, here we go. Anymore, my beautiful Christians, I love you, Christians. I'm a Christian. I love you. Get yeah. So I didn't hear him say I am not a Christian, but hey, some people don't see it that way. And this brings me to this main point so far of the video, which is President Trump is a person who is going to continue to do his rallies. He's going to be speaking. He's probably had more rallies than any other president in history. And I don't even think it's close. So every time he does a rally, people are listening. Right. And anything that he says that could be taken out of context or misconstrued, the media is going to do it. These people, they hate President Trump. They are sick because of his success. They are sick because of how resilient he is. They're definitely sick that he survived that assassination attempt. There is a poll that they did on Democrats that said 30 percent of them wish that that assassination attempt was successful. Those are the type of people we have in this country. They're that sick. Right. So these people, they're so deranged. They cannot separate truth from their feelings. Let's keep going. And let's talk about Donald Trump. I want you to take a listen to something that Donald Trump said last night about Christian voters. Take a quick listen. And again, Christians get out and vote just this time. You won't have to do it anymore. Four more years. You know what? It'll be fixed. It'll be fine. You won't have to vote anymore, my beautiful Christians. I love you, Christians. 
Okay, so Jasmine, let's talk about this because I got MAGA coming at me right now on social media telling me that I'm crazy because my interpretation of what Donald Trump said was he's never gonna leave the Oval Office. And they're telling me two kind of resounding repeated messages that I wanna share with you. One, they're telling me that Donald Trump is too old to stay forever in the Oval Office, which I agree, I think he's too old. He's too old to be in the Oval Office. But number two, they're also telling me that Donald Trump peacefully left the last time he was in the Oval Office. And why am I saying that the man would never leave? I wanna get your thoughts, because I think both of those things are stupid. <laughs> Well, I agree. Donald is too old. Uh, he been too old. He been too crazy. He been too everything. Uh, he's too much of a criminal as well. But no, and, and y'all cut right before the really good part where he said, I'm not a Christian. I thought that that was oh, amazing yeah. as the super Christian folk are saying that he is our orange savior. But nevertheless, no, we know. I mean, this guy has flirted with things such as tyranny when he said things like, I will only be a dictator on day one. Um, we know that they tried to pull a coup on us, even though they are now trying to make sure that they rewrite history and say, oh, no, 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 this was just some sort of good patriots that were on a tour through the Capitol. They just happened to break shit, um, hurt people, um, you know, and ultimately there were deaths that were caused as it relates mm -hmm. to January 6th. So, yeah, no, they are absolutely all about this life. We know that the Supreme Court has set it up so that he can do whatever he wants to by giving him immunity. And we know that he picked J.D. Vance because he wanted J.D. Vance to do what Mike Pence wouldn't. Ultimately, when Mike Pence would not steal the election for him and agree to certify the election, they said, hang Mike Pence. And so when we start talking about violence and where it comes from, it is all started and ending with MAGA. OK, can we just have a moment of silence for common sense? Representative Jasmine Crockett. I mean, you want to find someone who has Trump derangement syndrome. She's right at the top of the list. And Katie Fang, who is the person hosting that little segment, let's first uncover her first little stance, which is uh, President Trump does not want to give up power. I find this little allegation or this deranged allegation of him just so far reaching and it's not even remotely close to the truth because here is the truth. He, on that day, hosted a rally on January 6th. He also told people to peacefully protest. He also told them to listen to the police. He also requested the National Guard to be present for security purposes and Nancy Pelosi declined it. And she denied that she declined it until when? A couple of months ago where she finally publicly came out and said, yes, he did request that and I did deny it. But they would make you believe that he gathered troops up. They marched down to the Capitol. They pulled out their firearms and they shot up the place to overturn the election results. That's what they want you to believe. That's how deranged they are. And of course, without actually fact checking or listening to the video correctly, they're running with this narrative that he's saying that he's not Christian. And Representative Jasmine Crockett is one of those people who they're going to try to push this as much as they can. They're going to try to take anything they can and get it out of context and use it to scare the American people. That's why she's using the dictator quote where he said that he was going to be a dictator on day one. They're, they're taking it out of context. He is a person who is a jokester, right? He's a person who has a personality, okay? He is not this serious, I'm never going to crack a joke type of person. So when he cracks a joke or he is being sarcastic, the media takes him too seriously because they are deranged. That's why a lot of quotes and a lot of titles you see, it's based on fear but majority of that stuff is taken out of context, if not all of it, really. So, you know, I didn't hear him say that he's not not a Christian. I didn't hear him say that. I never heard him say that, you know, he wants to stay in the White House for the next 20 years. Now, what I did hear and I think where he was going with, hey, you're not going to have to worry about it. You're not you're not going to have to vote. We're going to have everything fixed for you was he's going to win the election. He's going to assemble a team that puts America first. And so when he leaves office, 
they will continue to further those policies. But see, the media, they're not going to do that, right? They're going to take what he said, take it out of context, and use it to strike fear in the hearts of everyday American citizens. And I think a lot of us are just fed up with it. It's, it's craziness. But let's go to this other clip. You won't have to do it anymore. Four more years. You know what? It'll be fixed. It'll be fine. You won't have to vote anymore, my beautiful Christians. I love you, Christians. I'm a Christian. I love you. Get out. You got to get out and vote. In four years, you don't have to vote again. We'll have it fixed so good you're not going to have to vote. Uh, over to you. <laughs> well, I mean, look, everybody on Twitter is, has been playing that and replaying that. Democrats, academics uh, saying this is what he wants to do. He wants to shut down democracy. You know, uh, what is the phrase? One vote, um, one, one man, one time. Um, but I think Donald Trump is well known for playing to his audience. He sort of is willing to forget the fact that the world is also watching his words. He was speaking to Christians. It certainly sounds like a president that is a presidential candidate that's that is um, determined to shut down the democratic process. But it could mean, you know, he speaks in code. It could mean I'm going to solve all the problems and and shut down debate on the issues that you care about, and therefore voting will be less consequential. We all know that the contrast um, between these two candidates, Kamala Harris and Donald Trump, is vast on domestic issues, on a number of foreign policy issues. And so the stakes are high, the contrast is high, and both candidates are going to be really using this message to drive passion and enthusiasm amongst their voters. Donald Trump is willing to even use language that suggests that he's willing to subvert the democratic process and put an end to it. Okay, so you guys seen that, right? You see how what they're doing? It, it's almost like they release a memo telling people what they want them to say about the topic, right? And right now the memo going around is he's saying that he is not a Christian. Let's tie that back to January 6 and let people know that he wants to be a dictator on day one. That's exactly where she is going. It's, it's as if they all just got this memo and these, these these talking points, which we know to be true because Peter Ducey called out KJP, the press, the White House press secretary on this. But anyways, I digress. Let's first talk about something that she said. She said that he wants to shut down democracy. Right. And what I find funny is the party that keeps crying about democracy is the same party that did not elect Vice President Harris to be their nominee. They selected her. Now, people are going to say, well, she got all these delegates. You, Again, how did they get the delegates in the first place? It's because they got President Biden out of the White House. They forced them out. Right. Or excuse me, they didn't get him out of the White House. They forced him out of the race. They forced him to drop out. And he didn't go. He didn't just drop out willingly. He went down fighting. There was a level of resistance. And then she just becomes the nominee without giving any other person an opportunity to step up. You know why that is? Because it was already a decision made by Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer and Hakeem Jeffries. We don't have to go too deep into it. But that party who did that to their own candidate, not just candidate, to the president of the United States is crying that President Trump wants to shut down democracy. But there are no policies. There are no legislations and there are there's nothing out there to prove that he wants to shut down democracy. And I find it funny that the Democrats and the people on the left, they are so obsessed with him that they become the very thing they are accusing him of. Right. They, they're accusing him of shutting down democracy, but they are the ones shutting down democracy in the name of saving democracy. Right. I read this tweet on, on X the other day where it was like, the, let me sum, sum up the Democratic Party. They are saving democracy by destroying it. That's exactly what they are doing. And the media is all in on it. So as I wrap up this video, I want to say this to you. Pay attention to what people say. You might have someone in your family or a friend or a colleague, someone you work with, that they are scared of President Trump. I want you to ask them why. I want you to say, hey, why are you scared of him? Well, I, th I think that he's he's uh, Im impulsive and he's going to start another world war. Oh, really? OK. Um, do you remember when he was the president? 
Yeah, of course. Did we have any wars during his presidency? No. Of course they're going to say no, right? Okay, did we have any wars under President Biden? Did we have soldiers that we lost under his watch when we withdrew from Afghanistan? Do we have world leaders who do not respect America, which is why they attacked Israel and why Russia invaded Ukraine? Right. So it, it, th these type of people, it's it's a limp, it's it's a fear that is not based on any facts. And if we just ask them questions and, and not even try to convince them, just ask some questions, just say, hey, where did you get that from? Why do you think that? How do you know that is true? Have you done any research? Who told you that? Right. And when you ask people questions like that, even if they don't agree with you at that time, when they leave the conversation, it might actually make them do something that is really missing in America today. And that is it will probably get them to think. And so that is my mindset about this. What about yours? What do you guys think about the media twisting his words and trying to say that he said that he was not a Christian? And now that it's going back to him being a dictator because of January 6th and you start to see their talking points and they're all going to say the same thing. What do you guys think about that? Did you watch that speech? I thought it was a good one. If you didn't go check it out. Either way, I want to hear your answers and more in the comments section below. Thank you for checking out the video today. Stay grateful, stay focused, and stay true. Peace.